Players Forum is your source for informative basketball talk about mentorship, education, and community. The ball is in your court. This is your Players Forum. He is the founder and head basketball operations of Blue Chip Youth Basketball Program here in Los Angeles. He's a well-qualified brother that's been running programs and changing lives in his community. So I would like to welcome Coach Alex Stevens to the Players Forum Podcast. How are you, brother? I'm good, man. How's everything on your end? Everything is well, man. You know, trying to get through it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, how are you holding up through these times right now? Uh, you know, it's been it's been tough. It's been trying. Um, it's been an experience. So uh, we're still here, and uh, <laughs> you know, in seclusion uh, for the most part. But yeah, it's been it's been an interesting time. It's been a lot of time to self reflect. Absolutely. Um, it's been a lot of honestly. You would think that you know, with the pandemic, that uh, you'd have all this free time, but it's actually almost been a lot more work uh my wife is a principal like and and with our program like it's like we've had to start our programs from from ground zero and start everything like all over again right it's been a lot of work um so i'm not i'm not mad though so no complaints absolutely man that's great man so that's that's exactly what we got you here well i want you to give us a background on what it is that you do and and how you're running your program give us a background on blue chip youth program well blue chip uh we changed the name a couple years ago i was uh, associated with ola simplest and bft before so we've been around for quite a quite a while um but with blue chip uh you know, we're just here as a basketball program trying to create the ideal like student athlete, um, trying to give them every avenue possible to be them be- to be their best selves. Uh, so we do, we go six days a week, or we were going six days a week. Um, we got clinics, we have practices, we play in leagues, we have elite teams that play in tournaments. Um, but, I, but more specifically uh, for our program, it is about the student athlete making sure uh, that they're getting good grades, they're staying on top of things, character development, um, you know, Absolutely. offering educational tutoring, uh, trying to get them in, you know, now it's not just college. You got to get them into good high schools. You got to get them into good middle schools. So providing kids with the opportunity through sport and through basketball to give them the opportunity everywhere on every level to uh, hopefully achieve their goals and their dreams. Absolutely, man. That's the that's the the absolute goal for these kids, man. Because I mean, today there are so many avenues, and if you want to use distractions as 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 a point as well. So, I mean, it just sounds like you got kids, you know, locked into the the, the big responsibilities that they're going to be in taking in the trying, future. Trying to, you have to, you have to. Uh, it's a crazy world out there, so you got to be you got to be prepared. Absolutely. So, so how did you how did you get into uh, the, the youth sports and, the, and that, that part of the business? Uh, quite honestly and simply, um, I thought I was a good basketball player until I found out that I wasn't. You know, that's what life would like do to you. You know, you're a good high school player in mm-hmm. the college where, you know, I, I was a walk-on at Long Beach State. Okay. And you realize that everyone there is like a, like a high school, like All-American. And uh, everyone <laughs> got like a seven-foot wingspan and a 48-inch vert- vertical. And, you know, you can't get by people like you used to. Like you, you used to. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, you know, it's, it's almost like a rude awakening. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's eye-opening. And, you know, that's what college did for me. Uh, luckily, I had, um, I had great coaches. Yeah. Uh, so I played in the Fila Summer Pro League, um, you know, had a contract to go play overseas. I'm the oldest uh, uh, sibling, so I wanted to be a good role model and finish school uh, for my younger brother and my other si- and younger sister. So they go, oh, you know, this is what I have to do. Um, yeah. And so that, probably that's my only regret in life is that I didn't, you know, take a contract. I didn't further, you know, my basketball experience. Um, so I started coaching uh, my high school coach the day after our, our last game in high school. He says, you know, he pulled me aside and he says, Alex, you know, you, the way that you understand this game, you should be coaching. And so he immediately uh, that summer, I was still in high school. I, I coached the JV and the, and the, and the freshman team wow. uh, for that summer. Um, I, uh, coached, uh, I assisted coach it uh, for a couple of different um, high schools uh, I was uh, um, head coach at this school in, in Irvine uh, for a brief time. 
And then, you know, the, you know, the basketball community is small. So you're mm -hmm. as, as you're playing, you're associated with all these guys. Um, Rich Goldberg and Robert Eichhardt was at, was at ARC and then BTI. Um, so I started working with them. Mm -hmm. I think the last team we had there, we had Aaron Aflalo, Nick Young, and Gabe Pruitt, like Ooh. all on the same team. Hit us. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, and so then, uh, you know, I got partnered with like um, Olin and uh, BFT, and that was that was almost like 11 years ago. Wow, it might be close to like 12 years ago. But mm -hmm. I've been coaching for over over 20 plus years, close to 25. So um, I've been around it a long time. Um, and then you just try and that's my way of trying to like give back. Uh, I love I wish I could play like more. Um, but all the injuries and getting old and gaining all the weight is like, no, uh, just sit in that chair and, uh, and coach like a little bit. So, Absolutely. You know, you know, that's that's. That, that's basically in a nutshell is what basketball will do to you. It'll, it'll, it'll give you everything and it'll also humble you. And yes. um, understanding that, you know, I, I still played, you know, at a high level. I still played, you know, in the leagues. I still tried to play as much as I could. But, you know, that level that I wanted to get to uh, just wasn't possible. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not mad at anybody. I, I tried my best. But uh, maybe my gift, my, my gift to this game was to... Uh, give assist and, give back uh, that's coach. right that's right so. man well i i mean hearing that you 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 got a, a a big chance at it you know basically not even out of high school yet just shows the maturity you know i'm sure just not only your your, your intellect of the game but you have to have a maturity and a leadership you know um attribute to be able to even give to your peers i mean that's that's a that's a tough position you know yeah man yeah yeah, that's well, tough. you know, it's it's the, it's the big thing like right now, like what we try and instill in these kids is to become leaders. That's right. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll get into it like later, but even like this social media, everything is about following somebody. But I, I want to create leaders. I want to put people that uh, lead the way that that pave a pathway, mm -hmm. um, you know, that that really make headroom like in this. And I think, you know, when you learn how to listen, when you learn how to communicate and you develop a, a work ethic. Uh, then you're going to be able to execute in life, both on the court and off the court. So um, that's the goal. That's the focus. That's what we're trying to do. Absolutely, man. Using using basketball as a tool. Um, of course, I think we all can relate in some kind of form or fashion that basketball has taken us so many different places and given us so many different opportunities and and, and, and being able to meet new people. It's, it's just been amazing, you know. So same with me. That's what I did when I was coming up just trying to figure it out taking advantage of certain opportunities and to give you a background on me even like i didn't i didn't play youth basketball i didn't play au or uh really barely played in high school played my senior year in high school and, and but i was able to take that one opportunity and it got me to california so that's how i got here i've been here ever since it was a long time but no nah, that's awesome man um yeah so i want to go into the rewards that you get from the coaching, you know, what, 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 what personal rewards you get from coaching these kids and, and having these kids actually follow your leadership? Uh, you know, I don't know if the reward is like for me, I, I would hope that the reward is, is for them, that they get, that they get something out of it. You know, I, I just hope that we can be mentors as well as like coaches um, I always say that my aspiration is, is to is to create inspiration for others, especially especially the kids that we have like in the program and for them, you know, each one teach one and then to inspire somebody else. Or um, I think the biggest thing is is what basketball provides is this environment where, you know, everybody can you know everybody can be equal um yeah there's gonna be people that's better than others but you you're gonna get you get to interact you get the connectivity yeah um and so what basketball is is it just kind of levels the playing field for everyone to be comfortable and to learn from each other and i think that was one of the biggest things for me in creating the program is just to give the opportunity for people of all different backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds, um, you know, people of color, people of not of color, just to come together yeah. and become teammates and become better people and then get to understand like who people are. 
um, where for they come different from, walks of life. Yes. You know, that, that's yep. what, you know, truly that's what basketball, I mean, think about it. You show up to like a basketball court, you know, who got next? You mm-hmm. start talking, what's your name? Pop, and next thing you know, you know, you, you creating these relationships. Yep. And uh, it doesn't matter like what you look like, who you are, how much money you got in your pocket. Um, no. and, and I think basketball, especially for guys coming up in the system, you get relationships for that you and friendships for for a lifetime, and yeah. uh, that's what you need in this life. You need networking. You need you need relationships. You need friend friendships. You need people. And uh, basketball is the ultimate like team sport. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I've always felt. You know, I play point guard, so um, I thought I always thought that the greatest plays. You know, you, you know, go look through the history of basketball. It comes off an assist. That's you know, right. It wasn't just a dunk. It was who threw that lob to to make that like nice dunk. You know, who who. Who threw that bounce pass? You know, my favorite player growing up was Magic. So, you know, just dropping that full court like bounce pass and mm-hmm. you know <laughs> throwing the lobs and you know getting the behind the back to like somebody and get everybody out you know out their seats. Uh, I love it. Who was uh, who was somebody that inspired you? Was Magic one of your guys that inspired you when you were coming up as a player? Yeah, Magic. Um, you know, I wasn't big like that, so I liked Isaiah. Um, hey, you know, with down. the handles. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, just I, I think what's different is that uh, you know us back then, like we just studied like everybody. If there was yeah. a move and someone did something nice, yo, put it in the VHS, record, <laughs> rewind, watch it again and again. You know, yep. James Worthy that spin move. You know, up into Kevin McHale's all that uh-huh. work that he had down low. Um, so whoever had something that was nice, you know, you studied it and you, and you worked hard at it, but I had an appreciation for like everybody's game. Um, and then you just try and, you know, make yourself as versatile as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, that, that was my thing. I wanted to try and perfect everything possible, you know, inside to outside to, you know, every part of the game. So, uh, of course I love magic. I love the showtime like Lakers. Um, but if I was going to try and pattern myself, with no handles it would have been like isaiah that's right yeah man straight line a to b a to b <laughs> Hit us. no i love it man I, I love the the uh the effect that you have on the kids man like i said uh us meeting and being in passing and just you know seeing each other all the time through these practices and definitely on game days man you always giving the same energy man and that's what i appreciate about you so much was your character and just how you you're just so passionate about your program and you know the outcome of these kids so uh sure. speaking of that it was a few weeks back there's a lot going on of course in society right now with black lives yeah. matter and all these things that's going yeah. on and you invited my wife and i to one of your team summits uh and you had a, a really in-depth discussion and i want you to go into what the discussion was about and just its purpose well you know, like I said, uh, I've been I've been wearing this uh, suit of armor for over 40 years now, and uh, and the thing is, it, it, most of the time it's not armor. People see it as as loaded artillery, and and uh, being a black man, uh, being a black person in America, you have to disarm like everyone, but you also have to learn how to navigate this world um, yeah. as a person of color, and. I've had maybe between 15 to 20 negative incidents with police. Um, and that's not to mention just the trivial things that go on daily. Um, I, I think I had told you or I had shared the story that, you know, last month, almost a little bit over a month ago, for the fourth time in the complex that I live in, I had security called on me <laughs> for riding my own bike in the garage. Oh, you know? man. Um, so these types of things have, have, have always happened, I think, is... Uh, as a as a black man like today, um, I've always people talk about entitlement and privilege, and I think that's what the antithesis of it is for a black person is, you know, a lack of freedom, um, a lack of feeling like you belong, um, and a lack of getting the benefit of the doubt. And I think we have to teach our our young black men and women, boys and girls, that what it takes and what to look out for and um, how to react, um, whether it be dealing with police officers or with dealing with people like on the street, you know, swimming in the pool and people want to come up to you and say, you know, do you live here and and whatnot? And so for, you know, we have a lot of black kids like in the program. So I wanted to get some of our youth and bring them in 
I brought in uh, Jelani Janice, who, who's what lead training officer for the LAPD. A wow. wonderful friend yeah. and an amazing basketball player as well. Um, I invited you because, you know, I have the same respect for you and what it is that you do and how you hold yourself. Um, and we need to be at, we need to be as unified as possible and have as many as we can in, in this because it is a war. Um, and so, you know, just want to provide an environment, an environment and, uh, and a place for people to feel comfortable um, to speak and for our young kids to uh, interact and and just see how they feel and, and if yeah. they had any experiences and if they had any thoughts and any questions, especially with having an LAPD officer who was wonderful and saying, you know, I'm black before I'm blue and I understand. And, and he provided like in-depth uh, um, background on, on situations that had gone on and you know, how police may have should have acted or should have reacted in the situation, right. what they're taught. Uh, you know, we did some some role play. Um, but, you know, for me, I just want to, um, again, be a mentor, be someplace for be a sounding board so that people have some place to go. So, and Alex, again, I don't mean to cut you mm-hmm. off. I want you to go no, into but, um, the role playing situation, because I thought that was a really good part of the discussion on how Jelani um, actually just created the entire scene of what could possibly happen on both ends and gave the perspective of what the cop would do and what you should do. So could you go in and on on that? Well, it was great. Like he put, he he put a player like, uh, you know, the situation was he was in a car and he was getting pulled over and, uh, you know, it, it immediately the tension between a young black man and an officer and the asking of questions and, you know, you know, how should you reach for something? And, and we did it both ways in, in which um, there wasn't full compliance. And when there was full compliance and, you know, when the police officer wasn't very nice and, you know, when he went about it in a way. But I, I think one of the big things that Jelani explained is, uh, you know, the worst thing that happened to you, you know, on a single day is what happens to me like every 15 minutes. And so right. I can go from rescuing a cat out of a tree to seeing a, a crackhead who, who who cooked her her baby on, on a stove. Right. Uh, you know, so, you know, it, it's just trying to create this um, a narrative and a pathway um, to try and find some common ground uh, between. And so I think the role play was really good for our kids to be able to see like, hey you know okay this is this is how you're coming to the way this is how you see it mm-hmm. you know so he gave like a, a gave like a cop's perspective on when he reached for this this is what i saw or he was nervous and this is the reason why i thought he was nervous and so this is what it came to he, he, and when he came up i think indirectly with this slogan which was you know comply so you can complain yeah you know, comply so you can complain that was that was so catchy you know, and, and right on point you know yeah, the word and, comply and, and, period is is huge and i think that's the part the part that we may get a little confused where if we do everything if you go through all the steps of doing exactly what's asked of you respectfully then hopefully the outcome can be different you know so i really appreciate it when he said that but also i think these kids need to have is some type of education besides a guy like jelani who he can't reach everyone you know it's it's great that he you know you're his connection and contact for your program but i believe that the next step for us all as community should be to have somewhere on this internet for kids to have some type of list on how to comply you know yeah or, or, you know, here, here's the big thing, and we, we talked about it a little bit, is what happens when you do comply and sure. there's still, like, the issues, right. you know, and, and, and I can speak firsthand to, like, some of those things that happen where you comply completely, but you get people, like, out there that, uh, that just, that are just uh, you know, having a complete abuse of authority. True. And these are the things that happen. And, and, and it's an everyday walk of life. We have coaches like that. Yeah. You know, we have coaches that probably like cross the line or do too much or teaching the wrong thing. You know, this is every day and in every situation. But the thing is learning how to navigate these situations, how right. to react, how to act, mm-hmm. you know, and being articulate about and knowledgeable about each like situation. You know, sorry about that. <laughs> No, it's okay. We can get it. We hey, but that's that's how we rocking. We here, you know. It's part of it. But like you said, you you, you're in a different time, man. 
We're yeah. in a different time. You never well, know you what's know, going on are right we now. In a different time. This has been happening for all time. You know? like, very true. Very you know? true. Yeah, I'll rephrase um, it. So as far as like when you say that, yes, this this time I don't believe has changed. I think it's gotten a little louder because of social media as well. Absolutely. You know, social media is a big piece of what's going on in society as far as it being right in front of us. You know, everyone in every car you're at has a phone and they have an opinion. <laughs> they have yeah. a point of view. So yeah, it's 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 definitely trying times as far as that. Yeah. Man, that's but we'll get through it, man. We'll get through it as long as we stay together and, and continue the positive message and, and, and stand unified as you said. Then hopefully at least for at least for what you're doing, from what we're involved in, we can make that change with what we do every day with these kids. Yeah, as much as we can. So I want to go into a little bit as far as the business aspect of the youth. Um, you know, does that overshadow the actual message? So you're giving out that message. You're doing what you do with your program. But as a whole, do you think the business aspect of it gets in the way? Because, of course, you got to make money. Of course, you got to be involved, you know, financially. But does that overshadow the message in certain aspects? Uh, I believe it can. You know, I think it's all situational. Um, it that's a tough question. Uh, only, only because I, I think there's so many levels to it. You know, it's like a, there are so many layers. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm saddened that it has become that youth sports has become such a business, and it's getting younger and younger and younger. And um, I, I think it's it's becoming clouded and almost delusional to to a point. Um, right. I, I, I think. You know, if you were to ask me, like, what's the biggest problem? I would say parents. Um, say Go I into have. that. Why? Because I I, I kind of agree to to an extent as well too. Well, what do you why well, why do you say to parents? I think they they've created this. I, I call it DPS, delusional delusional parent syndrome, hey. um, where the thing with social media is is that everything is at at the tip of a finger. Everything you can see, and everyone feels, especially parents, feel like, oh, I want that. And I think what gets lost is, um, is that parents are like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I want. I want my kid to be like that. Well, then we forget about the journey and the process. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just ha happen overnight. Overnight. Some people, some people do wake up and they're blessed like that, but you know, that, that's, that's the 1%. Um, and I think we lose what sport is, which is again, the interconnectivity, which is the competition, which is again, the journey and the process. And everyone wants my key word on this is instant gratification. Yep. I want this yesterday. Yep. And and if you didn't give that to me, well, then you're not fulfilling your role as like a coach, your role as a mentor. And look at all these kids who are on, you know, who have millions of followers. And, you know, why can't I have that for my kid? And why are we playing in this tournament? And why are you doing it this way? And shouldn't you? I, I mean, th there's so many opinions. <sighs> it you know? is. And so my thing is, you know, I, I don't make my living like on basketball, like I'm an occupational therapist. So I get up every morning and I go to work for most part of the day. And then my afternoon to evening is, is usually filled like with basketball. But I often ask the parents the questions when they come at me like that, like, hey, how would you feel like on whatever day it is? Can I go to your job the next day and then sit in on something that I've never done before and give you opinions on how you should, you know, do your job? Right. You know, like, yeah, we're experiencing yeah. this. And, and again, you do. Again, this is a journey. I can't. I can't stress that enough. Oh you man, know, you, it, it, it is micro skills that turn into macro skills, and there's so much that goes into this. It is so detail oriented. Um, you know, it is the nuances of this game and understanding. And I, I feel it's become hard harder over the years because I used to have this, you know, an ample amount of time to teach everything as they as it need be. But now everything is like so rushed and be, and now since there's so many programs out there, if you don't give me what I like, well, then I'm just going to go over there. They're going to give me like what I like. But see, that's the thing that that just carries on a bad habit. Like I, I've been around a ton of guys, even back in the day with college where it's that same syndrome. 
you know and that starts early oh I, I, I don't like this school this 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 coach is not playing me right now i'm gonna go transfer you know and then you transfer and then you do it again and then now your four years go by you don't have great productivity but then you want to go pro you want to go to the next level well guess what you think those 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 uh gms of, of these professional teams are doing they're gonna look at your history like you're saying your journey what did you average your freshman year how did you progress each year into your senior year you know so if you can't live less than a, in a youth program then you definitely not yeah. gonna get to it and, and and get it done when it's time to get to the next level so well, the, I, problem, the man, problem is everyone everyone's trying to win a national championship in the second grade you know <laughs> like i'm like you know, what college recruit is like you know what was your record when you were in fifth grade you know what would you, like, <laughs> you know and, and so like i said the the for blue chip what it, what it has always been is the developmental process yes so you take these kids at a young age you work on skill development i could care less about winning a game like to be honest with you i could care less about winning a game period i'm competitive but that's not what it's about it's teaching them how to understand the game when do you do this when do you use that you know it's like you know just because we make you a black belt doesn't mean that you, you know you you run around like a ninja throwing ninja stars at everyone <laughs> walking down the street like no right. you you have to you first of all you have to earn that and so as you get the skills and then you you start to apply like concepts you know my whole goal is to facilitate an easy transition in the high school mm -hmm. you know I, I really i really want them if you're good enough you can play varsity like as a freshman mm -hmm. you know but it takes it you don't and you don't have to be like six six if you are a skilled uh, player that has an understanding of the game you work hard especially on defense you communicate and you're a leader you're giving yourself an opportunity but that's those are those are habits and skills that are learned um, yeah you know, hey, i always tell are, kids this yeah. listen you should star in your role just be a star in your role what you do best is what you should put out there every single day every day you know so i agree with yeah. that for sure yeah but the problem is the parents are like you know you you're you're your star is that you have the leading role. That's <laughs> <laughs> a great way to flip it, right? <laughs> you know, like, but, but teaching them that, hey, yeah, yes, star in your role. What is your role? Um, mm -hmm. Who are and, you, you know, are and, as a player? Yeah, and, and be multidimensional, be multifaceted. Mm -hmm. You know, again, and that's life. That's yep. life. You know, like, you know, be able to do like anything. Um, you know, and interesting enough, I think those are the ones that actually are the best coaches. Even if you look at, you know, the NBA, all the greatest coaches were guys who were role players like on teams. Yes, they were. You know? Absolutely. Phil Jackson is, of course, number one of one of those guys yeah. that was a great role player, but a winner, you know, Pat at Riley, that. You know? At Riley yeah, as Pat, well. You know, guys that did everything, you know, they, they were the Swiss Army Knife. And mm -hmm. so now they have an understanding of the entire court, the entire team and what everyone needs to do. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, everything in this is, is important. So the pressure, the pressure on the kids, you know, I think, like you said, that's a lot that comes from the parents. But what do you get as far as like when you're talking to your players, like, do they feel like that they have their pressure to, man, I coach, I got to do this because, you know, I don't know if mom is going to even have money for, for college. You know, I got to play like this and do this to get a scholarship, you know, or even on the youth level to, to get in Winward, you know, get in all these private schools, crossroads, all these places that, you know, these kids you know inner city kids may not even be able to afford they feel like they have to have the pressure to be seen so do you go through yeah. that absolutely um but yeah i try and tell the parents uh pressure burst pipes you know yeah. you, you gotta you gotta relax and allow kids to actually be kids um, yeah and uh you know i don't think that they're ready enough to carry the complete burden on their shoulders um but in time again it, it's patience um and it's and it's trusting you know whether it be in a system or in a coach or or in something that says okay we can try and get you to reach your fullest potential if you buy in to, to what yeah. it is that we're trying to do um but yeah there's a lot of pressure and, and you know you think about it you go to the games and i think the the biggest um you know not proponent um is you, you know you got all these parents parents in the stands you know yelling yelling out the wrong uh, instructions man contradictory you know, <laughs> you know and so you're like oh yeah that's that's not going to help the process <laughs> you know, that's not going to help the end result yeah um, it's gonna hurt it and, and so <laughs> you know and then and then what's tough is these kids are stuck like in the middle because i know you guys got to ride home with them 
you know, yeah, like, that you ride get home. And listen to that for forty five minutes. Of, yeah, like oh uh, yeah, you know, you should have taken this shot. You shouldn't have passed it to him. You should have done this. All the woulda shoulda. But you always want to say like, you know, I get the phone calls and be like, yeah, what would you have done? Could you play? <laughs> you know, like, mm. like we, we do this like for <laughs> we do this for a reason, and there is an end goal. And you know, luckily. Uh, we've been very successful in getting kids into like these private schools and and getting to the, them to where they they want to go. Um, you know that and that and I, if you ask for the reward, you know that's what it is. Like I got a kid going to uh, Princeton, got a kid going to UNLV. Um, you know you got kids that are doing like pretty good stuff. And uh, you know I, and let me take it. I'm not claiming like any kids. <laughs> you know um, you know but just people that you had the luxury of like touching and hope that you change their life. So I think the end goal is hopefully they do something, hopefully they remember you, and then they turn around and they pass it forward or they give back to the program. Absolutely. Or, give, or create their own program with, with the life lessons learned. And the um, teaching is coming from you. Still. Yep. So, you know, that that's my that's my hope. Um, so with there being a lot of programs out there, what is one aspect of your program that's unique and a selling point that separates you from everyone else? Uh, I don't know if it's unique. Uh, I just know that I care, you know. Um, I know that my coaches and my staff, like, we care about the kids. Like, not for what they do, like, on the court, but, you know, for who they are. Their families, uh, you know, we love going to graduations and recitals and, yeah. you know, anything that, that, that makes these kids happy. You know, we're there at their games, their basketball games, but that's not their entire life. Right. Um, Those and, other events in their lives are important, yeah, too. And when we and we talk about, you know, is it a business? I think it's, you know, it's really got to be personal, like when you're a coach. Mm -hmm. um, that it's not just about like the business that you truly care like about these kids you care about it's an investment you know yeah. and so you want to build equity in, in, in the, every single one of these kids and make them feel special um that someone cared and they have like a family and they have a team and they and they have the backing of people who genuinely care about them that you can that you can call i think one of the biggest compliments that that i get is like I have multiple kids where I'm their emergency contact at school, <laughs> you know, like, wow. you know, something happens, you know, call coach Alex to come pick you up, you know, yeah. um, you get those calls like, Hey, you know, uh, they're messing up here. Can you talk to them? Can you mentor them here? You know, so, mm -hmm. you know, can you give them a, you know, a solid book to read? Um, you know, sometimes just pick kids, you know, it's great that you, as you coach you, and you have kids that come back, you know, I still have kids that, will, you know, hey, I'm going to pick you up on Saturday or Sunday and you're going to help assist me on, on coaching like this game. And, and they're so eager and, and, and to do it right. um, just to be a part of it. So, you know, that that's I, I think for us, forget trophies like won, um, games won and played. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's just uh, creating a game in these relationships and this interconnectivity last like time and and get being able to watch uh these kids grow and become you know decent like human beings in life yeah yeah absolutely man i mean your impact i like i said i see it all the time with these kids and i mean y'all look good y'all play good they play hard they're respectful i've never seen any of these kids out of line under your tutelage so i mean that's 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 major props for you man and, and again personally i look up to what you do and i think you do a really good job at it i appreciate you man yeah for sure yeah. Definitely. I dare him to get out. I dare him to get out of line. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know we old school like coaches. Like, That's right. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. Come yeah. on. <laughs> no, but yeah, you got, hey, we got all that respect. You know, mm -hmm. focus. Yeah, I think I got all that stuff like on here. Family, mm -hmm. energy, intensity, effort, the intangibles. Yeah. Uh, hey, you got it. It's more than. No, nah, no doubt. Um, so what, what's next? What's next for Blue Chip? I know we're going through the pandemic and we don't know what the new norm is going to look like. But as you said, I know you and your wife are working really hard to continue your program and make sure the message stays the same. And um, I, I just want to know what, what what's next on, on the list for Blue Chip. Uh, hopefully we get into a gym soon. <laughs> <laughs> I will, right? Uh, wear your mask, you know, uh, man. Wear your mask. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how many more Zoom clinics we can do. But, um, man. Uh, what's next is, you know, just hope that, that you know, I, I don't know, like, for me, to be honest, you know, I mean, 
like I said, coaching every year gets a little bit more difficult. Um, um, but I, I hope I can do it as long as I can. I hope to inspire like others. Um, I hope that we can continue to grow. Yeah. Um, I hope that we can con- continue to connect and create relationships like us and <clears throat> and do more. Yeah. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I think that's what we need is we just need more togetherness, more unity. Yes. Um, and I think basketball does a, is a great vehicle, a great tool to be able to do that. So <clears throat> I hope Blue Chip can continue to go on for as long as, as possible. Um, I hope we continue to create uh, talented kids that love playing the game and continue to do well. You know, I, I, you, as much as we say at a competition, I do love winning. You know, um, um, I probably hate losing more, but uh, you want them to be able to experience like success. Uh, yeah. You know, as a basketball program, I, I was sad. I was saddened for my eighth graders. I think we had talked about it. But, Man. You know, for me, as we talk about yeah. this journey, by eighth grade, as they transition into high school, the goal is to put them on a national like circuit. So, you know, we were doing Florida, New Orleans. Uh, we did. We actually got to go to Houston. Um, okay. Lost to the number one team in the country. That was an eye-opening experience. Um, and so, you know, allowing them to travel, uh, showing them that there's no need to be intimidated on any level. You've been there. You've done that. You've seen that. And yep. you're ready. Yep. You're ready for the next stage in life. <laughs> it's and, just a game. So, and so now I think, you know, what's next is that we continue with the, with, you know, with the next class and the, and the next class and the next class uh, for as long as we can. Um, like I said, again, luckily enough, I'm, I'm thankful to have such like uh, great coaches like in our program. Uh, shout out to Javon and Breen and Miguel and, and Blake and all the guys that, I, that that we have like over there. We yes, got a guy, sir. Coach Rod, Coach, you know, giving us clinics from New York. Um, so it just it's, it's great to have just a, a really good group around and to have a network of you know, that we can continue this process. Okay. So speaking of coaches, there's a lot of coaches, of course, as we spoke earlier about wanting to start their own youth program. And they may think it's simple to just get a bunch of kids together, teach them some drills and some games. And then we go and we play and we win. (laughs) So give me some advice. (laughs) No, right. Give me some advice to these, these inspiring coaches that want to start their own youth program. How should they go about doing that? If you want to start your own program, uh, first off, you need time um, and you need to be committed, uh, you know, and you can never get complacent. You know, we're always like learning like new things. Um, So study. The game is always evolving and changing. So um, like I said, patience, resiliency um, and uh, just being willing to put in the time that it takes to harness um, all of these things that you need to create a good program, uh, create a solid a foundation, whatever your values are, uh, stand by those. Don't let anybody change them for you. Um, you can't compromise yourself like in this game. I think that's, that's a huge thing. Yeah. Um, your beliefs are, are your beliefs and that's what you hold strong to. And so that's what you'll need to create a good base and solid foundation for your program. Um, you know, and then whatever like works for you. You know, mm-hmm. I get a hard time because I still don't have an Instagram or Twitter account. <laughs> you, know, so, uh, <laughs> you know, I haven't caught up like that way with all the social media. But, you know, to me, it, it, it jades like the process. You know, I, I want to you know, my, my biggest thing is it's it's better to be. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think it's one of the things I always tell the kids. Um, it's better to be discovered than announced. Ooh, you know, that was a cold line when you said that, you man. Know, you got to say know, that for and, our listeners one more time. What hey, is that saying, man? It's better to be discovered than announced, meaning everyone's seeking all this exposure, but you run the risk of being exposed. Um, so, you know, you know, those <laughs> those highlights where you never miss you mm-hmm. know, the best shooters, the best shooters miss six out of 10 times in the world. So and not everything is perfect. Um, but uh, when we say practices make perfect, perfect practice makes perfect. And so <clears throat> you have to be willing to to dig in. You got to be willing to do the work. And when you're in that gym, you could be in that gym with that guy that's got, you know, 10 million like views and 10 million like likes, but you make them see you and be like, oh, who is that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Where did he come from? You use that stage. That feeling, that feeling right there, the stage can be yours. Yeah. You can own that stage. The spotlight can be on you, but be ready for it. Be prepared for it. It's all in the preparation. Um, let the preparation be your motivation. 
uh, and your inspiration. So, you know, you got to do all these things to get there. Uh, Cause you know, sometimes these videos and these views don't tell the real story. Mm -hmm. you know, a, lot, a lot of it is Hollywood and makeup. Um, so, you know, you know what, what, what does it look like when you take off all the makeup? <laughs> That's right. Or, uh, you still look cute. You still look cute then. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you know? Uh, Hey, but but you know, but I don't you know no take away from anybody uh, or anybody shine you know. Do you at the end of the day, if you know, if you give some advice, do you be you and uh, and and again, don't compromise yourself like for. That's right, man, Coach Alex. You have been amazing, man. That's why I said I, I knew this was going to be epic. You're so well qualified, and you, you're such a conscious brother, and that's what I appreciate. And I know those kids and parents they appreciate you on how you run your program and, and just the way you live your life, you and your wife. So, man, I, I just want to thank you so much for coming on the players forum giving us some information giving us your perspective on your program uh give us give us all of your uh social media uh links to 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 blue chip um blue chip yeah that's a great question i might have to like send that to you like i said i don't know the instagram like <laughs> yeah. um it, it, la blue chip uh so i think it's la blue chip los angeles blue chip but uh yeah um, we're gonna we're gonna hook you up la blue yeah, chip and then even like our our uh, our website at uh la uh la blue chip .org. um and that'll have like all our links on there like as well i apologize for not being so social media savvy um but uh you know like i, I appreciate you i appreciate like this platform i, I said and, and and watching you you know and all the things that you're doing like right now you're not just dropping those nuggets you dropping like boulders and mountains so, man thank you uh, love 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 what it is that you're doing love how you and your wife are going about it um and you guys are uh, inspirational as well so uh appreciate you know, it we man. all just can continue to learn from each other and um this, this has been a great opportunity and i appreciate you for it absolutely man likewise man thank you players form coach alex players stevens form. Where the players play. Where the players play, and then the information is there to stay. All right? Yeah. Where the ball sure. is in your court. The ball is in your court. Alex, man, we appreciate you, Coach. Uh, hey. We're going to definitely have you back on here once we uh, figure out what the new norm is, and, and i love to update with you and what you got going on with your program, though, for sure. For sure. Appreciate you. All right. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a good one now. Thank All right. you, guys. Peace, peace. Right. Peace. This podcast series is part of the Great Gain Athletics, Inc. organization and is brought to you in part by the creative producers at The Sultry Group. There's an art to connecting souls. Digital media, content creation for the arts and souls.